other adult at the time, I know exactly where I was 20 years ago. I was in London, England, Great Britain. I was working with a video production collective called Inner Vision and I was commuting between London in England to Amsterdam where I was living at the time. Inner Vision, this video production company, was founded by a couple of monks from the tantric tradition that I was initiated in. Ananda Marga, I will put a link down below in the text box. We did a lot of spiritual content, we did social justice, a bunch of educational projects. Hitendra, the main editor of Innovation, uh, a fantastic editor who I was lucky enough to apprentice with for many years. He taught me everything I know about editing. At the time I was working with inner city youth in Amsterdam, the Netherlands, specifically Moroccan youth at risk of uh, falling at the wrong side of the law. We taught all kinds of life skills, basically. Cooperation, communication, being on time, being accountable, uh, working together, planning ahead, all kinds of skills that you need to bring to the table if you're gonna make a video. So we taught these kids actual videography and editing and story telling and storyboarding and writing a script and yadi 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 some acting etc but the main goal was to empower them and teach them skills that would translate into all areas of their life 9 11 2001 i was in london and our producer rajeshwar or bruce lu called from Hong Kong where he was working on whatever project that he was working on and he said very strongly turn on CNN and just the way he said it gave us shivers and we obeyed right away we turned on CNN to see one tower on fire and as we watched I mean I'm getting chills again We watched the second plane crash into the second tower, live on CNN, with Projesfor with us on the phone. But the moment that had the most impact on me and that I will never forget is the image, the two towers were still standing and on fire and people were leaping to their death from God knows, high up in the Twin Towers. And one image was a man in a business suit that jumped out of a window. He had a briefcase clenched in his hand that flew open and paperwork was flying out. The image of him holding on to what must have meant something to him, paperwork in a briefcase. Who knows what he felt was important enough to grab and, and take with him as he leaped to his death was something that um, just touched me to the core of my being. Now my 9-11 story starts a little earlier. I would guess that it was 2000. I traveled to New York City and I met a Jew named David, which in and of itself is not really surprising. You can throw a stone in New York City without hitting a Jew named David. 
if it's not his first name, it's his middle name, and if it's not his middle name, it's his Hebrew name. So that was not the special part of this story. What was special was that we had a really deep and um, I would almost say life changing affair. I met him, we hooked up, we explored New York together and we visited Twin Towers. It was an attraction, like a tourist attraction. I'm not sure if we paid for admission. We probably did. <laughs> this was America after all. So I'm sure if somebody monetized on it. I remember going up in the elevator and it took a while even though the elevator was pretty fast. And we ended up on the roof of one of the Twin Towers. And it was just magnificent to overlook the city and uh, I remember standing at the edge I was little like whoa this was very high and there was wind it was very impressive and of course I was also in a somewhat altered state of mind because I just fell in love with David I was wide open absolutely wide open to this guy and as I was looking over the city I started to get a little dizzy and envisioned what would happen if these towers would come crashing down. So in my mind, I was seeing them do this and kind of crashing everything in their path. And I expressed this to David, who explained to me because he was a very smart guy. So he knew about physics and he explained to me right there on top of the roof, that if these towers would ever to collapse, they would collapse into themselves, which is exactly what happened. So we were standing here discussing this collapse of these towers and I started to feel anxiety, gloomy, gloomy imagery was coming up and we were like, you know what, um, let's get the hell out of here. Let's get the hell out of here. We need to get the hell out of here. And it started out almost like a joke, like, uh, oh my God, oh my God, these towers are gonna crash down, let's get the hell out of here, let's get the hell out of here. And David kind of like got lost in the game, I guess, and said, we need to take the stairs because we can't take the elevator back down because the last place you wanna get stuck in is in an elevator. Thank God it wasn't a Shabbos elevator, because then it would have taken a while. But, okay, so we dashed for the stairs. We ran for our life. We, we ran down those stairs of flight as if we were running for our life. And we were so caught up in the game that we actually felt it to like anxiety, uh, fear, adrenaline. Uh, we were exhausted and out of breath when we finally ran out on the street and uh, uh, after we caught our breath we went to Starbucks or whatever and kind of laughed it all off but when I saw those towers crashing down that experience of course completely came back to me on this YouTube channel I talk about being psychic and you could easily classify this experience as a foreshadowing or a connecting with a future event in a way that makes it very tangible the same David became fairly significant in my life yet he traveled to Amsterdam and visited me in Amsterdam on that first trip because we came again we traveled together to Auschwitz which was also a um, really um, impactful experience impactful Yeah, very impactful experience. And then I met yet another David in a Jewish renewal synagogue in Amsterdam called Beit Hachidush. I'll put a link down below in the text box. 
very progressive synagogue, a lot of LGBTQ plus people, a lot of expats from Canada and a lot from the States. This David was from San Francisco, traveling all throughout Europe as a dancer, performer. Uh, he likely had a sweetie in every city. It was a bit of a rolling stone, cute like pie. Uh, we had uh, a fun time and uh, we were not very uh, responsible. So he got me pregnant with Alicia, my daughter, Alicia. She was born in October 2002. So I got pregnant early 2002, I guess. If I do my math right. <clears throat> this David, that's a hummingbird that I scared. And I scared this David to the point where he just couldn't handle the situation and split. So I had my baby, not alone. I had it as a single mom, but I wasn't alone because my other David from New York came to visit me just like a week or so before Alicia was born. And he was the David that was present at her birth. He was there throughout my labor. I gave birth with my legs spread out wide right in front of him. He saw her come out. He was the very first person to ever hold my daughter. And um, he spent, I think, only one more day because he was on his way from somewhere to somewhere. So the day after I came home with my newborn baby, he split also. What's up with these Davids that keep splitting on me? It was very significant for me to have him present at the birth of my daughter. I believe that he eventually went back to Israel and when I say he went back to Israel I mean making Aliyah and uh, I think he studied in Yeshiva and became a good Jew, an observant Jew. I'm sure he married a good observant Jew. We lost contact but he was very significant in my life and he really blasted me open and I shared a couple of really really significant events with him. What is your 9-11 story?